G'day, he's all going. This is Ian Harris here from Australia, aka Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Now, this is part three of the, and the final part, of course, of this painting I've been doing for beginners, how to paint a scenery. So we've done the sky in part one with some basic easy clouds for beginners, and we've done the second part, which was the water, and maybe some horizon landmarks there, okay? So now in this one, we're going to do the foreground. And I'll keep it easy. We'll just do some simple palm trees. And I've noticed a few people are doing their palm trees the way I've been showing them, but they're sort of not grasping it. So in this part three series, I'm gonna show you how to grasp those palm trees to get them looking like a palm tree, okay, with your flat brush. And I've also been asked a question by Kalen's Art Journal. They asked, how do I tape my canvas so straight onto the board? Well, I'll also do a quick demo on how to do that. But first, I'm just gonna get the colors going up the screen there for you like that. So you can see just what we're using in part three if you wanna use the exact same colors. And um, then we'll get things going, all right? So let's show you how to tape your canvas onto the board straight. So for Kalen's Art Journal, who wants to know, they sent me a comment saying, how do I get it straight? I'll show you. This is, normally I've got a board fixed to my easel. And it's easier if you're using canvas boards to, instead of using this little thing at the top and jamming them down. So what I do, I've got, you've got a canvas board, right? So get the back of it, just get some, wide masking tape and I just fold it back on itself like this and put it roughly in the middle but up high a bit just so we've created like some double sided tape on there okay and then work out where you want it on your board just any old way you want it reasonably straight let's say there plomp it on Okay, that's holding it straight. Then I start from the top, bottom, side and side. I don't go top, side like that, just in case it's moving it, all right? So then just work out how much you want covering your canvas. I'm putting it on the canvas first. I haven't touched the board, all right? Keeping it straight. Then I'll push the edges down like so, and then I'll push that on there. That's tape the top on. Same for the bottom. I've got it onto the canvas board first, then I'll push the canvas board down and push it on without getting any waves in it if you can help it, okay? And then for the side, same again. Work out how much overlapping you want. Rub it on, squash the edges down. Push the board against your board. And the same on the other side, okay? And that is how I put my canvas boards onto me board. Down here, I've got a different variety of flat brushes. I like using flat brushes for my palm trees. This these simple effective palm trees. Like this one up here, just to get these simple, I mean, they're not realistic palm branches, but they look like a palm. Anyone that looks at your painting is gonna see a palm tree, okay? So we're gonna start with the trunk and I've got my raw umber, my titanium white and my yellow oxide. Is that raw sienna? That's raw sienna, where's my yellow oxide? Okay, now on my palette I have the raw umber, my white and yellow oxide. I've also got a raw sienna dark there. It's pretty similar to yellow oxide, but it's got a, 
it looks a bit more of a darker tone so I thought I'd put that in there as well now I'm working out what size I don't want to use a big one I'm going to go for this one for now so I'm going to wet the brush into my water there and pull it up and I just want to damp the water off it on the paper towel like that right now I'm going to pick up the raw umber on both sides of my flat brush ready to do our trunk let's come up to the canvas here okay now work out how high we want it and what we're going to block so I might put one right on the edge and one maybe in the middle here that's just the way I want it okay I don't want to kill this cloud so I'll put my, I'm going to have most of my tree here so now this is a very easy way to grasp these palm trees work out where you want the top I want the top about here and then come down to the bottom and it's going to come off the palette here not the palette the canvas okay so I've got my hand resting against my canvas this is all dry and I'm just going to do it down to there don't go too slow where you're getting it all jibbity jabbity okay now if that paint is a bit dry and chalky give it a bit of a squirt with water just so it'll flow off your brush and we want the top mainly wider than the no not the we want the top thinner than the bottom we want the bottom wider so we're going to get this all painted in this raw umber okay so i want the top pretty much narrow and we'll block that in now that's all blocked in with the raw umber it's coming that my tapes up higher there but it's coming off the painting now i'm going to wash this brush and then that that trunk there is still wet okay so now i want to pick up the let's try the raw sienna dark or the yellow oxide either either i'm picking it up on my brush again now i want to come in a motion like that okay like that around the trunk that's what i'm going to do i'm going to lightly put it on here first and if you feel this is not really working for you you can blow dry your trunk doesn't matter if some bits are thicker like see here to the bottom doesn't matter this is very wet we wanted to set it in front of that background there so we're virtually going like that going a bit smaller to the top of the trunk okay just like that okay now just wipe the brush you don't have to wash it just wipe the paint off I've just wiped the paint off there and I want to like I did there I want to sort of bring it around just like so okay it's that easy practice this on a surface somewhere before you commit to a painting so as when you're doing it on your painting you'll be confident okay the next color I'm picking up is titanium white the paint on the trunk up there is still beautiful and wet so it's going to mix and blend a bit let's start at the tippity top there right eh? we'll just get a little bit there I'm doing it to this side because I'm right-handed so as I can bring it now like I've said before if you've gone too light we can bring the darks back into our picture here so I'm just that's why I say work it out on a bit of practice run first so you know what to do because I suppose palm trees they have bands in the trunk and we want to sort of emulate those in our painting as well Get some more how's that look see now that's looking very ghostly and white which I thought might happen so washed me brush back to the raw umber and now let's just soften some of that white back and it's a matter of playing with it till it's right it'll dirty that white up and we've got some dimension in that trunk there we go how's 
that looking in the monitor? That's looking palm trees. It's kind of marbled, mixed up in a marbly way. And that's pretty much how you can do a trunk, depending on the shape. Whatever shape you want it to go is up to you. Okay, that's our long, tall, skinny palm trunk. Some of them are long and tall, some of them are weird and bendy. bendy. So now this one, I'm going to do a different way, just so you can see the difference. So this one's going to come from off the bottom of the painting and probably scoot up here like that. All right? And obviously the bottom is going to be wider because wherever we're standing, we can see this one a bit closer. Okay? So map it in, map it in to where you want it. Okay, I want it about there. Okay, then I'm going to colour this one in, and I'm going to I'm going to dry this between every colour, just so we can see the difference. All right, I've finished mapping this trunk on. I've done it in a different way. It's if anything, it's it's coming from us and out and up, so we're wider here. That's why I've got it like that. Now I'm going to blow dry this, and then we'll add those other shading colours on. All right. Now back down on my palette here, I'm picking up the yellow oxide. We've dried the trunk of that palm tree. I'm chiseling this onto me. This is like a tapered, a chiseled edge, a tapered edge, a dagger's edge. Now I want to virtually bring this around the tree. Lightly does it, just lightly. Just so we're getting some bands in our tree. See, the brush itself is making those bands. Now this is pretty much the same colour as that sand, but once we mix some more colours. Now I'm thinking this, because this is not so heavy as the, the actual base colour, we might not need to dry this, this will be alright. Bring that around. Bring it around, keeping it like the, the trunk round, okay? I'll start from the bottom and see where, because I use the same colour I used for the sand, I mean this really could have been lighter. So I want to distinguish this a lot different. And because our paint on the actual trunk is still wet in places, it's going to sort of mix a bit, which is good. Always load your brush, because if you're still going and no paint's coming off your brush, you'll be going along and going along, all that work for nothing. I'm thinking, why isn't mine working? It's just because you forgot to load your brush up, that's all. So we're sort of scratching that, we're tearing the paint out. This is just the colours I'm choosing to use for a basic palm trunk. You use these colours, or if you know the exact right colours, you can even use them. Alright, now we're going to put some white. I'm going to pick up the white. I haven't washed the brush. I'm just sort of getting it, because I don't want it too stark. Okay, and I'll start about here. Try and get some of this very lightly wrapping around the tree. And then at the end, if any of this is a bit too dark, we can get our raw umber, the first colour. Oh, and darken it up, okay. I'll get up the top there. So we're just sort of scraping it around the shape of the round trunk. Get this bit a bit darker, because I'm seeing it clashing with my sand colours there. How's that look in the monitor? Yeah, that's... And there's some distinct bits here that I want to soften down, just like that. Squint your eyes, look at it, and soften them down a bit. How's that looking? That's it. That's it. Just finishing it off, putting our shadows there. That, that'll do it, I think. Now let's put our frongs on there. <laughs> How we going?
front. We all caught up. So we've just got two palm trunks, whatever arrangement you want or whatever shape you want, all right? So we've dried one and we had one wet. What do they look? They, they look all right. Once, once I've finished the palms, I might see if I can get some shadow under there as well, but I don't want to make it too technical. I want this, remember, to be achievable for a beginner that's got the patience, whoop, that has the patience and the heart to want to do something nice, okay? And this is what this tutorial is all about. So now the next colours I've got is forest green on my palette. Yellow green and cadmium yellow. It's a medium yellow. They're the three colours I just want to use for the, I said frongs. I don't know if they're called a frong, but the part, the big palm leaves. These big, these big things here. All right, so let's get over here and let's start using the right appropriate brush to get this look. Now I'm grabbing my other flat brush that I want to use for the palms and I'm using the yellow green, the forest green first. Now that's quite thick. I want to moisten it a bit, not too much, just enough to transfer off the brush onto the canvas. And we just want to go along and down, let it tear. Can you see that? Yeah, let it tear. Then come back again and make some more there like that, okay? Just like that, that's good enough. And then we'll do, this can probably go off the picture, I'm not too fussed about it, cause it's, so keep doing it like it's off the picture and everything will work out right. There we go. We'll get another one over here. I've seen people do them, and I'll just show you what I mean after I've done this. So we'll load all these ones on there. Don't make them too, you don't want it too busy. You can get carried away and make them too darn busy. You always want one in the, like that as well. We'll get another one up here somewhere. Practice these, they're fun, they really, they really are. And we'll probably get one more just down here. But this is just a nice little compact tall one, okay? Now you've got that far. And in getting that far, let's just say that's your trunk. I've seen people doing some renditions of this. God bless their soul. They're trying hard, but I want to try and show you how to conquer your problem. They're sort of, um, let's they're, they're making them, I don't know, let's see if I can try and do it. They're making them very open, okay? Uh, what else was it? I mean, when you're doing the branch, I could see that there, you could see this line here, and you can see all the pull downs. So just, like I said, practice these things. Now, just to finish that off, the first color, like I always say, not too much, but work it out. You want the edge. See how it's a bit naked there? To me, it's a bit naked. Let's put some little pointy ones out there. Just getting the points on the outer edge. Just say like that. Why I do that, that fills up some of the, because we're gonna make this busy, just busy. And those prongs are just like extensions of all the busyness that we've put on there, okay? And then the yellow green is gonna distinguish what palm is in front of the other one and what's sitting behind. You need to get it busy like that. Now look here, see see how there's a bit of a gap here? We could probably put something just like that. Squint your eyes and look at it and work out what's what it needs. Now let's wash this brush using the same brush because it's the same size we used up there so we don't want to go any bigger or smaller. We're going to load up the yellow green, okay? Very lightly, because this is wet. Work out what's behind. So, very lightly. That's a behind one there. 
That's a behind one there. It's sort of mixing with the forest green. We don't want it too loud. I'll get something. I'm not going to go in the middle there because this is a behind one. I don't want to have them all in the middle. So I'm working out what's behind first like that. Let's just say this one's a bit behind as well. This is the actual colour of our palms. The forest green's just the depth of it. Now we can put the ones in front. So this one here is coming from the middle and he's in front, okay? This one down here is there. This one here. Keep loading up your brush for every one. There we go. And then we're just going to put the smallest of yellow, just the smallest. So we pick up our yellow, both sides are the same size brush again. Now this is less, we want to put less on there. So we'll, you want it to sort of, <laughs> scratch away onto it, okay? Not solid and thick like I've done there. And if it's too loud, we can sync it back with the yellow green again. This is just highlighting the yellow green because the yellow green is the color of our palms. Let's just get some bits in there. And now just to finish it off, wash that brush, get some of the dark back again and kill some of that yellow green. You can, even if you've got to do that, but just sort of play with it, keeping the brush strokes of your palms. We're just killing that yellow green where it's a bit too loud. I want to have a look at that. Yeah, there's a bit just here that's a bit... There we go. See, it's wet. Everything sort of bleeds. It's beautiful. We'll just get some of the raw rumber we use for the trunk. Just on the corner of your brush there. Or you can load it up, but just use the corner of your brush up in the tree there. Just to put maybe some... I don't know if there's usually got some coconuts or some darkness in there anyway. This is just... And sometimes they might have crap hanging down as well. That's it. You've just got some darkness put back in there, okay? Depth in the middle of the tree. It's not naked. There's one palm tree in the daylight. Now we'll do the other one, okay? <laughs> Let it tear. See how, see how it looks like all just one brush stroke, but I've done many brush strokes to do it. It's not a real looking palm tree, but they're good enough. Let's have one coming down there. One down there. We'll do one down there and on the other side of it. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that. That'll do. I shouldn't have done it that way, but I'll get one over there. Boom. See, come along again and bring it down. Do not go like this. And then down like that and down like that. If it looks okay, fine. But I'd rather keep continuing it this way. It's just a matter of knowing these little procedures. Bring him down there. And they're making their own beautiful frills at the end of them. Come along again. You don't have to whistle like an idiot. Oh, look at that. I just picked up a lot of the yellow green. I better wash that brush. Okay, I've washed that brush. I want to get something up here. So you start from, just get your brush on there. It's on there. Come along freehand, willy-nilly off there. Start again. Bring the palm out. See how easy they are? And we can put one. See, they don't all have to come from the one spot. 
in the center of the wheel. I've started this one from there just to break up the weird the weirdness on the middle. Okay. Now we'll we'll make it busy. Get it all busy. Just busy. And if it still looks a bit naked, like I think it's a bit naked here, we can just put another one in there. And that's all there is to it. Then we're just highlighting them. And then we're going to pick up some yellow green the same way. Let's put him at the back. Turn your brush around and use the other side. Let's see what this looks like with not as much yellow. Because if you overdo the yellow, I find you will kill the, the beautiful colours that it should be. See, to me they're bright enough actually. See, even I learn. See, and you can cover up mistakes with the next, like that one there, I reckon I've buggered up before, but... Just going over it seems to fix it. All right, just to finish him off, I picked up some of the raw umber again. We'll get some of this dark stuff in the middle. Now you can work out, okay, Ian, I like adding the yellow highlight to the yellow green, or I do not. Up to you. There we go, we've got some dark in there. How's that looking on the monitor? Yeah, to me, that's fine enough. That's good enough. So we've got a difference with the yellow highlight that I added in the first one, or without it. But it's all done the same way. you just got to make sure you keep this bit a bit busy and not too skinny looking, all right? Well, I've got to admit, I'm not that good at shadows, so I just painted all that back and put the tree back in front of it. I'm going to sign this, okay? So, just a nice little, autograph there. Let's not forget Steve's little footprint. All right, we'll just keep it that simple for beginners there. We've got the sky, the mid-ground, and the foreground. Okay, we're going to take this tape off, and we'll put a frame on there. Oh, I've left this tape on for a few days. It's not a good idea to do that. on there see how she looks these sort of paintings always look good in a frame okay we've got our beautiful clouds with some two-tone colors in there we've got our water sort of a tropical color we've got some distant land mass in the background and we've got a foreground of two simple palms that's not too shabby eh all right there's a few links in the description below one for my patreon page you can support my content and keep me in front of the camera a bit longer as time goes by there's one for my Facebook page. Add me on my Facebook page. And if you ever want any of those blending brushes, they're 35 American dollar. Private message me on Facebook. We'll get the ball rolling for that, okay? If you like what I've done, you tell your friends. But if you don't, you better tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck. And good on you.